In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to conquer the spreadsheet that we teach in our first accounting class, our first chapter, our first week. By the time we're done with this, you are going to feel wicked smart, as we say in Maine. So let me walk you through this spreadsheet. So here on the first tab, we have the transactions that we talked about in the last video. And if you haven't watched that, I will link that down below. Then we're going to show here our chart of accounts. And again, if you haven't watched the chart of accounts video, I'll link that down below. But these are the accounts that we have that we can use um, in this new company that Joe Smith has started to track our transactions. So I've done a little cheating here for you because you know, I want, I want to make sure you have all the right tools to do well in accounting class. So here we have a, our chart of accounts. These are the names of our accounts. I have added the account type to help you out here. And then I've also added the normal balance for those accounts. So this is what we have to choose from. We've got cash, accounts receivable, and supplies for our asset accounts. We've got accounts payable for our liability account. We've got Joe Smith Capital and Joe Smith Drawing for our equity account. And then for revenue, we've got fees earned. And then we've got rent, salaries, supplies, auto, and miscellaneous expense. So these will remain the same for all three of these methods that we're going to go through in these different videos. So here we're talking about the spreadsheet. And we're going to jump down here to this tab. And this is what the spreadsheet looks like for that first chapter of your first accounting class. So I have done some color coding to help you out. So here on the left hand side of the accounting equation, and again, the link for the accounting equation video is in the description if you need it. And we have our assets on the left and those asset accounts pulling directly from our chart of accounts. We've got cash accounts receivable and supplies cash, accounts receivable, and supplies. Um, and then on the other side of our equation, we have our liabilities and our owner's equity. And we said that our liability account that we have for this particular example is accounts payable. And then our capital accounts for Joe Smith Capital and Joe Smith Drawing, the equity accounts. And then as we talked about in the accounting equation video, when we're talking about owner's equity, it is impacted by revenues, making it go up, or expenses, making it go down. So we have expanded our accounting equation here to include our fees earned, which is our revenue account, and our various expenses, where we'll be subtracting those from our fees earned that will give us our overall owner's equity number. So it's still our good old accounting equation, assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. We've just expanded it to include these various accounts. So then what we want to do is we want to start working through our transactions so we can see how it works within this spreadsheet. So our first transaction, we're opening up our business account and we are depositing $55,000 from personal funds. So what are we getting? We are increasing our cash by $55,000 and we are increasing our equity by $55,000. Whoops. So is our accounting equation in balance? We are increasing cash on the left-hand side and we are increasing capital on the right-hand side. So we are in balance. We love that. Our second transaction we purchased office supplies on account for $3,300. Are we paying for them now? We are not. We are buying them on account, which immediately tells me we have to pay for them later. So $3,300, we are increasing our liability, our accounts payable. And what are we getting for that? We are getting supplies. And remember I said that this is the supplies asset account, not the supplies expense account, which you see over here. So $3,300. So far, we are in balance. Everything is looking good, feeling good. And then the next transaction says that we are receiving cash, okay? 
big clue right there. So we're receiving cash for fees earned. We're doing the thing that we do in our business that makes us revenue. And that amount is 18300 So we're increasing our cash by 18300 And we have revenue. Our fees earned is going up by 18300 Again, we've got plus 18300 on the left and plus 18300 on the right. We're in balance. Doesn't that feel good? I love being in balance. The next thing that happens is that we're going to pay rent for $8,300. So how are we going to pay that? Well, pretty good chance we're going to pay it with money. <laughs> so we are reducing our cash balance by $8,300. And the other side of that will be our rent expense. And we said that when we have an expense, it reduces owner's equity. So in the spreadsheet version, we will be doing minus $8,300 because we're reducing our equity. So now we have minus 8,300 on the left, minus 8,300 on the right. We're still feeling good. We're still feeling like we're in balance. In the next transaction, we're going to pay creditors on account. So let's talk about that. Who do we have for a creditor? Who do we owe money to? Where's our liability? Well, the only liability that we have is this $3,300 in accounts payable for our office supplies vendor. So we're going to be paying part of that bill. We're not paying all of it, we're paying part of it. So what do we need to do with accounts payable? Do we still owe $3,300? We don't because we just paid $2,290 of it. And where's that money gonna come from? Obviously it's gotta come from our checking account. So we're reducing our cash. So in the next transaction, now we're going to bill our customers. So two things going on there. We're not getting paid right now. We are going to bill our customers and we're going to get paid later. So that to me says we must now have an accounts receivable. So we're going to increase our accounts receivable by $30,800. And the other side of that is that we have earned some revenue. So we've done the thing that we do in order to make money. So we're going to increase our fees earned by $30,800. I can't wait to see what happens next. This is so exciting. So the next thing that's going to happen is we are going to pay some expenses. So whenever you see um, a transaction that says paid, you can guarantee that it's going to come out of your checking account. So in this transaction, we're actually paying two different expenses. So we're paying auto expenses and we're paying miscellaneous expenses. So our auto expense is going to be minus 1380 and our miscellaneous expense is going to be minus minus 1800. All right. So then what happens over here on the cash side? So we're going to combine those two expenses. And let's see 1380 and 1800 is 3180 and as we know, we are subtracting that. So we've combined those two expenses. We've put them in their individual accounts and we've combined the amount of our cash. Now you could 100% do those as one line a piece and have your 1380 coming out of cash and your 1800 coming out of cash and then your 1800 being down here in the next line. You could totally do that. And then the next thing that happens is we're going to pay salaries. So we're going to pay our employees and we're going to pay them $7,300 from our cash account because, you know, they're not going to take promises. They want their money. And then we're going to subtract that from our salaries expense. We're reducing equity. And then comes our weird little tricky supplies, supplies expense um, transaction. So what we're being told is that we have used up $2,000. $50 of our supplies. So right now our supplies balance is $3,300, but we've used up $2,250 of that. So we want to subtract $2,250 from our supplies balance. And what the other side of that's going to be 
is an expense. So we've used up our asset, it's become an expense. So we're going to subtract that from our equity under supplies expense. And then our final transaction, Joe Smith is going to take money out of his business. He's going to take $13,800 out of the business. And the effect on his equity is that we are reducing his equity. So $13,800 to reduce his equity. So those are your transactions. And now comes the magic part. Are you ready for this? So now here are our uh, column totals for all of our accounts. And I'm just going to bold those to make them pretty. So what we want to do is we want to determine if we are still in balance because everything has to balance. You know, I keep telling you, stay in balance. Well, this is what I'm talking about here. So we want to make sure that our assets equal our liabilities plus our equity. So all we're going to do is we are going to total up our assets and we're going to total up are the right side columns here and look at that we are in balance so now we have recorded all of our transactions for the month of june we've debited and credited and made sure that those were equal as we went down line by line we totaled up our account totals and then we checked to make sure that our assets equal our liabilities plus our equity if you get to this place and your assets do not equal your liabilities and your equity, then go back and go through each one of those transactions and make sure that you're getting each line in balance. So that's the key. If each line is in balance, when you get to the end, you will be in balance overall. So make sure that, for example, if you've got a minus 83 on the left-hand side, you've got a minus 83 on the right-hand side. That's usually the part where people get, get tripped up. So there you have it. There is the kind of odd, and we'll never see it again, but we did it, chapter one, spreadsheet version of tracking uh, and analyzing transactions. So... Join me again for the next video where we will talk about how to do the same thing, but using T accounts, which will get introduced to you next in your accounting. Until next time, stay balanced, right? You're starting to get that. I know. Yeah, it's great. All right. Peace out.